This is the plaintiff, Victoria Zapola. She says she bought a 1998 Ford Taurus wagon with 173,000 miles on it from the defendant and was shocked when she brought it to her mechanic and he told her it was no good. The brake lines were installed illegally. The car was unsafe and undrivable, and the defendant has some nerve putting her and her kids in danger by selling her a piece of junk. She's suing for every penny of the $1,100 she's out and thinks she will walk out into the hall the victor today. This is the defendant, Denzel Williams. He says the plaintiff looked at the car twice, test drove the car, negotiated the price down, and bought it. A week later, she calls him and says she doesn't like the car anymore and wants to return it. Huh? She loved the car and bought it. Now it's hers. He's accused of unloading a lemon. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff bought a 98 Ford Taurus with 173,000 miles on it. Can't believe that the car ended up being a junker. But the defendant says, plate of bought fair and square. It's the case of the Taurus with plenty of signs. Victoria Sapola, yes. you are suing Denzel Williams for $1,100. 900 of it money you gave him for a car that you want to return, and 200 of it tax registration and plates. What happened? Well, basically, I bought the car from them on uh, the 9th. I found the ad on Craigslist, and they were selling it for $900, and I needed a car. Do you have the Craigslist ad? Yes, I do. OK, let me see it. OK. Thank you. Okay. Um, 1997 Ford Taurus wagon. Odometer 170. I presume that means 70,000. 170,000. Yes. Well, that's why it was a cheap buy, you know? Yeah. Okay. But we have a saying my grandmother used to always say, lo barato sale caro. The cheap comes out expensive. It sure does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that day, I had contacted them, and they said it's somebody else was looking at it first come, first serve. So I brought my mechanic with me to go see. And she, I was outside the house, and she told me she'll be out. And then 10 minutes later, she called and said she's actually not home. So I ended up dropping him off, going home. Later that night, around 6.37, they called back and said, you can come look at it now. And I was like, why not? Might as well just take a look at the car. But at that point, my mechanic couldn't come because he was at home, I'm sure. So, I had brought her with me. We went to look at the car and- Why'd uh, you bring her? Does she know cars or just because she's your friend? Uh, both. Okay. Yeah, so we both went. Um, we test drove the car. Well, she test drove the car. Everything seemed fine. I told them that I would buy it and- You uh, didn't want to wait for your mechanic to see it the next day? Well, I did, I did let him see it the next day. But no, they, I mean they, before buying it. Well, yeah, they were rushing me through it because oh, they said rushing that, you through it. The money's in your pocket. You don't have to release it. Other people were looking at the car, and I needed ah, it immediately. Okay, but that's different from them rushing you through it. Yeah. You were rushing you through it because you wanted it. Exactly. All right, so you buy it that night. Is there any paperwork associated with the purchase? Um, yes, I just have. Yeah, okay, I see all the paperwork. Sure. How about you? Do you have any paperwork associated with the purchase? Yes. All right. Is this? Um, the contract that you signed? Yes. Okay, and yours also says sell as is. Yes. Do you have the title that he gave you? No, um, DMV confiscates the old title and sends you a new title. And the new one came with the lien on it. And if you see the Craigslist Did the old ad, one have a lien on it? It, it did have the lien on it, but I didn't, I didn't know that. Didn't you look at it? Um, yes, but I didn't, I didn't understand really what, he basically told me if you pay $20 that it'll be taken care of. Whose lien was that? Was that a loan you had on it? No, I buy it from somebody. He said he, he buy it with the lien. He said check. Okay, the everybody's got a lien. Is anybody <laughs> paying the bank? I don't get it. That's no, what a lien means, that the no, bank is owed money. No, I check it, no money on it. Okay, did you, is that what you told her? I told her before she buy the car. I said, this car, I buy it with a lien on it. Mm -hmm. It's a 97 car. Okay, so the paper you got said lien, and according to, did you say what's a lien? Yes, I asked him, I said, what is this? And he said, oh, don't worry about it, it's just a lien, it's all paid off. If you pay $20 when you register the vehicle, they'll remove I... it and it won't be on your new title. Okay, and then what happened? And then, it sure was on my title and they said well, that. Well, did you pay the $20? Did no, you they show wouldn't. proof that the, that the loan had been paid off? Mm -hmm. See, it's a little more of a hassle than that. There's an actual legal procedure that needs to be followed. The DMV had just told me basically that he has to remove it, that I can't do anything about it because it is in his name. 
No, it's not in his name. And yes, you can do something about it. And the Craigslist advertisement says title status clear, if you see. Okay. Title status clean. Why would you print on your Craigslist as clean when there's a lien on it? Would you buy a car with 173,000 miles? Depending on how much, uh, no. Okay, let's say uh, $800, would you buy the car? Uh, say no. Yes. <laughs> ah! Going inside the courtroom. I was on who posted. Who are you to him? I'm his daughter-in-law. Okay. But then he told her that. Yeah, I mean, she's testifying that before the sale, you knew that, that it yeah. said lean, right? Yes. Yeah. I sure do. Well, we gotta figure out if that's a problem or not a problem. Because basically, you make a representation to her that it's not a problem. It's a $20 issue. Yes, that's OK, right. well, that better be true. Because if not, then, then you can't do what you did. You know, you've got a bunch of, of um, problems with the car that you don't like. What are the problems? Oh, goodness. I was getting off an exit ramp to work, and the steering completely went. I thought I was going to crash the car. And it turns out his son is a mechanic, so he must have doctored it to make, it, make the sale. My, it's got a ton of problems with the vehicle. Uh, name what the problems are. It's just structural body rot. There's illegal brake lines on the car. There's loose and rotten exhaust pipe. There's a leak. The brake lines What are, does illegal brake lines mean? It means that there's compression fittings on the rear steel brake line, and it is illegal to use the compression fittings on brake lines. They must be double flare with unions to connect the brake lines. Like okay. I said, his son is a mechanic. How long did you own the vehicle? Only from 209. Well, that's a long time. And your son is a mechanic? Yes. Did he do work on this vehicle? Yeah, he do work, but we never fit no brake lines. I just changed brakes. You just changed what? The brakes, the front brakes and the back brakes. The pads, you mean? The pads. But I never fixed. Right. I, I don't care. Let me tell you the things I care about and the things I don't care about. I don't care that you bought a car without a mechanic. That's on you, not me. I don't care that there's problems with the car on an as-is sale. That's on you, not me, not him. The only thing I care about if, is if there is a misrepresentation. If you didn't know there was a lien, that's a fraud. But the essence of a fraud means someone's tricking you. If you're not tricked, it's not a fraud. You knew when you bought the car that there was a lien. And if you didn't make it your business to find out what that meant, that's on you, not on anybody else. Because it was in bold letters in four different places on that title. So there's no fraud because you weren't duped. Right. All right, I'm going to give you a month. Mm -hmm. If you need more time, contact the court. Right. If it turns out that you can provide to the court something from the bank saying money's owed, I will rescind this sale and he will return your money. Right. OK, good luck, folks. Thank you. So the sale is back on hold for the moment. So step on in here right next to me right here. What's your next move? Um, to send the letter and find out what's going on with the lien. Mm -hmm. All right, what do you expect is going to happen here? I'm suspecting that there's going to be money owed. All right. Well, we will see. Yeah. We'll All right. Find out. All right. You have your homework to do. Get <laughs> yeah. to it. All right. So step on in here. Uh, you heard what the judge ruled. What do you think of that? I think she need a free car, and get back her money. Is there money owed on the car? I buy the car with the lien. I show her before I sell her. Are the you car. worried about what might happen when she writes this letter and finds out? I know that I don't have no lien on it. I you might it. get this car back. Okay. You want it? Yes, it's a good car. <laughs> Harvey? Okay, Kurt, well, it turns out there was no lien on the car, so she had to keep the car and pay the dough. Uh, word to the wise, 173,000 miles, you are playing with fire.